Hi everyone, we are the Group 1, and in this video, you will be hearing about some of the traditional teaching methods. There are different types of traditional teaching methods, and some of these will be discussed in this video by the following. For lecture method, you will hear it from Sir Robert. Study method from Amnoni. Inductive method from me, Sir Leo. Deductive method from Ma'am Jenny Rose. Project method from Sir Ivan. Laboratory method from Ma'am Casey Lim. And Q&A Socratic method from Ma'am May Lim. And without further ado, let's start to hear the lecture method from Sir Robert. So good day everyone, today we will talk about the lecture method, but before that, what do we mean by the word lecture? The term lecture came from the Latin word lectare, which means to read aloud or a telling method. So let us move on to our next slide. So here, <clears throat> an old Chinese saying, if I hear it, I forget it. This simply means that every learner has an individual style of learning. Other students can easily forget the lessons given by their teacher if they can only hear it instead of seeing it or doing it. We see that in doing or actual hands-on, the more probability or big probability for the students to learn less or easily because we do believe that experience is the best teacher so let us now differentiate the lecture and lecture method so a lecture is an oral presentation intended to present information or teach people about a particular subject <clears throat> while on the other hand lecture method is the teaching procedure compromising the presentation of content clarification of doubts explanation of facts principles and relationships let's go to our next slide so here we have types of lecture what are the types of lecture so letter a traditional oral essay the teacher is an orator and the only speaker so here the teacher serves as an orator and the only speaker because the teacher keep on instructing or giving theories regarding the, uh, his or her student's lesson. So let us move on to our next one, the letter B, participatory lecture. <coughs> participatory lecture uh, begins with the lecture brainstorming ideas on the lecture topic on what they have read in preparation so here, the students are given a chance to socialize with other people for their brainstorming ideas. So let's now move on to our next slide. Letter C is Feedback Lecture. Feedback Lecture consists with mini lectures with 10 minute small group discussion. Uh, there is an opportunity to manipulate the lecture content here. Okay, the letter D. Mediated lecture. <coughs> Use of media such as films, slides, web based images, along with traditional lecture. So, here um, in mediated lecture, teachers use this to present videos uh, which help them to present uh, their visual aids through PowerPoint presentations, maybe. So, let's now move on to our next slide <clears throat> now we're going to talk about the purposes of lecturing the first one is stimulate thinking the first one which is the stimulate thinking has something to do to the increased or it increased the excitement of the of the learners 
to learn by engaging them to participate in class. And also this is to spark someone's interest to learn. Next one. <coughs> develop concentration. The second one is develop concentration. Here learners are given a chance to focus on the lesson by lecturing or through writing. This also increases the concentration of the learners to the specific subject matter. The third one is develop problem solving. In every problem, well, there is always a solution, but in order for us to get a solution, we sometimes have to face challenges in life. So what I'm trying to say here is that Learners will be able to test or demonstrate critical and logical thinking skills where they can soon be able to get their desired solution for that particular problem. Next one. And also, one of the purposes of lecture method is to achieve high order of cognitive objectives. It has something to do with the knowledge and also it helps the students to process knowledge based from what they have written through lecturing. The next purpose or the last one is inculcating the habits of learning and listening. Here learners practice their habits when it comes to reading and also to listening. And now I am presenting to you the advantages of lecture method. <clears throat> it is quite an economical method because it is possible to handle larger number of students at a time. The method is an excellent way of explaining definitions, levels, and terms essential to an understanding of discipline. So, what does it mean? It means that there are no limits when it comes to the number of participants in the lecture method. Here, you will be able to accommodate a larger number of participants at a time, which is really good. So, that's all for our discussion regarding our topic lecture method. I hope that you learn something new from me. Thank you so much for listening. Hello everyone, my name is Noni and I'm going to report about case study method. To begin with, let us define what is case study. Case study, the study of an instance in action. It provides a unique example of real people in real situations, enabling readers to understand ideas more clearly than simply by presenting them with abstract theories or principles. Case studies strive to portray what it is like to be in a particular situation to catch the close of reality and thick description of participants' lived experiences of thoughts about and feelings for a situation. Case study as a teaching method is an instructional method that refers to assigned scenarios based on situations in which students observe, analyze, record, implement, conclude, summarize, or recommend. Created and used as a tool for analysis and discussion, they have a long tradition of use in higher education, particularly in business and law. Desired goal and outcome of case study. Use as a teaching tools for engaging students in research and reflective discussion. Higher order thinking is encouraged. Solutions to cases may be ambiguous and facilitate creative problem solving coupled with an application of previously acquired skills. They are effective devices for directing students to practically apply their skills and understandings. Principles. Send written case studies materials in advance so that the students can digest the facts and issues involved. Direct students to solve the problem with a given time period. 
include oral case studies as a change of pace, keep them short, 5 to 10 minutes so that others in the group can assimilate the details. Let the instructor moderate, get reports from each site, have students construct their own cases, help students weigh and test values and separate fact from opinion. What happens in a case method classroom? In a classroom discussion, students analyze the information in the case and use it to solve the problem set up by the case. The, the discussion can take many forms, including closely directed questioning by faculty to help students draw out the information from the case and identify the central decisions of, or evaluations that need to be made. More often-ended questions and discussions as students evaluate options and weigh the evidence in small group work by students focus on specific analytical tasks. Many faculty members use role play as a technique to put students completely in the case environment. Ideally, case meta discussions involve mostly conversation between and among students, rather than discussion centered on direct participation by the faculty member. Many case method teachers describe their role as conductor, facilitator, or guide, drawing attention to their role in setting up discussion in which students are the primary participants. Conditions of learning and application. Role of the learner. Students learn to identify the difference between critical and extraneous factors and develop realistic solutions to complex problems. They have the opportunity to learn from one another. Role of the facilitator. For teachers, it offers an opportunity to provide instruction while conducting formative evaluation. Assessment methods. Assessment should be based on the teacher's pre-stated objectives. Aspects of observation and evaluation can include quality of research, grammatical structural issues in written material, organization of arguments, the feasibility of solutions presented, intra-group dynamics, and evidence of consideration of all case factors. These are the references. Thank you. Now, you will learn about inductive teaching, or also called. Let's start with the question, what is inductive teaching? Inductive teaching is more on student-centered. It is a methodology wherein the students need to learn new things and gain knowledge by themselves. This method uses instructions that makes the student to notice. Instead of explaining a given concept and following this explanation with examples, the teacher presents students with many examples showing how the concept is used. The intent of this method is for students to notice by way of the examples and how the, cons and how the concept works. In this method, students will usually be more involved in the learning experience and tend to participate more actively. Let's move on to the steps in the inductive method process. First is the presentation of the examples. In this step, the teacher should present several examples in their best order so that it leads to generalization. Second is the analysis of examples. In this step, the teacher lets the students to analyze and compare the given examples. After analyzing the examples, the students come to certain conclusions which is called generalization. Then, the form of or the formation of rules, wherein the students form the rules with the help of the teacher. And last is the verification of the rules, wherein there will be application of the rule with another set of examples. 
Note that in this stage, the teacher can indicate certain exceptions in the rules. Let's have some examples of inductive teaching. Example number one. This example is about shapes. First, give the student a sample to form with shapes. But make sure you don't tell them what are we going to learn at the start. Now, student will read the poem and find the shapes. Now, the teacher will process the student's comment towards the shape. And lastly, use concrete object around the classroom as a sample and help them to recognize the shapes. Sample number two is all about adjectives. Now, how will it go? First, the teacher give a story with the adjectives. Then, the students need to find out the adjectives from the story, and then underline it. And lastly, the students need to list down the adjectives on the whiteboard. And that way, they will, they will learn about the adjectives. So, Inductive approach is very effective because it requires students to process and analyze data, but still, there are advantages and disadvantages in this teaching method. These are some advantages of inductive teaching. First, rules that learners discover themselves are more meaningful and memorable maybe because of the learning process. Second is that the students are more actively in the learning process. Third is that the students will have greater self-reliance and autonomy because they are in full control of what learning outcomes may be achieved. Also, it helps the development of our learners' higher order thinking skills. To see and analyze the same in order to arrive at generalizations requires analytical thinking, so that's why. As for the disadvantages, students may hypothesize the wrong rules. Second, is it that is it can place heavy demands on teachers in planning a lesson. And it is time consuming. The time and energy spent working out rules may mislead students into believing that our rules are the objective of language learning. All we can say about inductive teaching is that it gives new knowledge, it is a method of discovery, it is a method of teaching, also child acquires first hand knowledge and information by actual observation it is also a slow process and it trains the mind and gives self-confidence and initiative it is also full of activity and lastly it is an upward process of thought and leads to principles hope you learn about inductive teaching in this video thank you for listening Hello everyone, I will discuss the deductive method and the advantages, disadvantages, step of the deductive method, the merits of deductive method, and also deductive reasoning. Deductive method Deductive method, a deductive approach to instruction is a more teacher-centered approach. This means that the teacher gives the students a new concept, explain it, and then has the student practice using the concept. It is also called a deductive instruction. The deductive approach is teacher-dominated. It begins with abstract rule, generalization, principle, and ends with specific example and concrete details. Deductive method. According to Bob Adamson, the deductive method is often criticized because 
it teaches grammar in an isolated way. Little attention is paid to meaning. Practice is open mechanical. This method can, however, be a viable option in certain situations. For example, when dealing with highly motivated students teaching a particularly difficult concept or for preparing students to write exams. Here are the advantages of the deductive method. Coverage of a wider scope of subject matter because our instruction is direct by starting the rule of the principle at the beginning of the class. We cover more subject matter over a period of time. No bother on the part of the teacher to lead learners to the formulation of generalization or rule we ourselves give the generalization at the beginning of the lessons. Disadvantages of the deductive method. First is, it is not supportive of the principle that the learning is an active process. There is a less involvement of the part of the learners. Lessons appear uninteresting at first. We begin our lesson with the abstract, with what the learners do not know, so at the outset of lesson, will look irrelevant and uninteresting. Steps of the deductive method. First, introduction. Second, statement of generality. Third, explanation of a general idea. Fourth, illustration. Lastly, evaluation. The merits of deductive method. Encourage gramming, discourage heuristic attitude, lack of pupils' participation, unpsychological, unnatural, spoon feeding, difficult to understand, unscientific, no originality, not nurture creativity. Deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is a fundamental structure of valid reasoning. Deductive reasoning or deduction initiates with a general statement or hypothesis and examine the possibility to reach a specific logical conclusion. The scientific researchers use the deductive method to test theories hypothesis. The comparison between deductive and inductive method includes the discussion covering similarities and differences among both of the method of logic or reasoning. Both are related to each other. That's all. Thank you. Deductive method. Good day to everyone. One of the traditional teaching methods that I will discuss is a project method. So what is a project method? A project method is one of the traditional methods of teaching in which the student point of view is given importance in designing the curricula and the content of studies. This method is based on the philosophy of pragmatism in the principle of learning by doing. In this strategy, pupils perform constructive activities in natural condition. A project is a list of real life that has been imported into the school. It demands work from the pupils. There are characteristics of project method. The first is it takes the student beyond the walls of the classroom. It is carried out in a natural setting, thus making learning realistic and experiential. It also encourages investigative learning and solution of practical problems. It is focused on the student as it enlists his or her active involvement in the task set. It also enhances the social skills of the student as it requires interaction with the social environment. There are types of a project. The first one is individual and social project. In individual project, every student solves the problem in their own according to their interest, capacity, attitude, and needs. Group projects, the problem is solved by the group of pupils in the classroom. Here, the social, citizenship qualities and synergism or develops simple and complex project the simple projects the students are completing only one work at a time it gives the deep information about the project in a one angle the student get deeper and broader knowledge about the problem while complex projects are carried out more than one work at a time
They are focuses on the work in a various subject and angles. Here the student get the knowledge about the work in a various activities and then mentions. According to Kilpatrick, there are four types of a project. The first type of a project is constructive project. Practical or physical tasks such as constructions of particle, making a model, digging the well and playing drama are done in this type of project. The second type of a project is aesthetic project. Appreciation powers of the student are developed in this type of project. Through the musical programs, beautification of something and appreciation of poems and so on. The third type of project is problematic project. In this type of project develops the problem solving capacity of the student. Through their experience, it is based on the cognitive domain. The last type of project is drill project. It is for the mastery of the skills and knowledge of the students. It increases the work efficacy and capacity of the student. There are step of a project method. The first step is creating situation. A project is never to be forced upon pupils. Situation may be provided by conservations or different topics, discussion on pictures, building or cities, by telling stories or taking out children on excursions and educational tours and trips. In the first step, teachers create the proper situation to the students in the class. He puts up the knowledge about the project method procedure, steps, and uses the students. A project should arise out a need felt by students, and it should never be forced on them. It should be purposeful and significant. The next step of the project method is selection of the problem. The teachers help the student to select the problem and guide them. Students are having freedom to choose the topic or problem based on their interest and ability. Before choosing the topic, the principles should be taken into an account, such as school tasks or to be as well and as purposeful and they are of such a nature that the student is genuinely eager to carry them out in order to achieve a desirable and clearly realized aim. Teachers should only thank the student for a particular project by providing a situation, but the proposal for the project should finally come from the student. The third step is a planning. The teacher discuss with the student about the problem in a various angles and points. After the free expression of the student's opinion about the problem, the teacher writes down the whole program of his action stepwise on the blackboard. In the process of planning, teacher has to act only as a guide and should give suggestions at time, but actual planning will up to the students. The fourth step is execution. The students are stating their work in this step. They are collecting the relevant information and materials at first. This teacher should give time and write time this to the student according to their own speed, interest, and ability. During this step, the teacher should carefully supervise the pupils in manipulative skills to prevent the waste of materials and guard accident. Teachers should constantly check up the relations between the chalk out plans and developing project. After the execution, they have an evaluation. It is done by both the pupils and the teachers. Here, the student evaluating their task. They determine whether the objects are achieved or not. After that, they criticize and express their feelings about the task freely. The evaluation of the project has to be done in the lights of plans, difficulties in the ex executions, and achieved result. And lastly, they are reporting and recording. It is the last step of the project method in which each and every step of the work are reported. The reported things are recorded in a certain order in a book form. It shall include the proposal plan and its discussion, duties allotted to different students, and how far they were carried out by them. It shall also include the details of places visited and serve with guidance for future and all other possible details. This, the book formatted reported is submitted to the teacher at the end. 
And that's end of my report. Thank you for listening. Good day everyone. I'm Kaysrim Nalaysay from Group 1 presenting to you the laboratory method. In this picture, as you can see, there is a teacher and a student who are in the laboratory and making an experiment. So, let's move on to the next slide, which is the definition of laboratory method. So, what is laboratory method? Laboratory method deals with the first-hand experiences regarding materials or facts obtained from investigation or experimentation. It is also a planned learning activity dealing with original or raw data in the solution of the problem. And of course, when you hear the word laboratory, it, it designates in the physical science that uses experimentation with apparatus. Okay, next. Next is the nature. Used to designate a teaching procedure that uses experimentation with apparatus and materials to discover or verify facts and to study scientific relationship. Used not only in the physical science but also in home economics and manual arts. Defined as a teaching procedure dealing with first-hand experiences regarding materials or facts obtained from investigation or experimentation. Aims To give first-hand experience in the laboratory which may increase student interest. To provide student particip participation in original research and to develop skill in the use of laboratory equipment and instruments. So there are two types of laboratory method. First is experimental and the second one is observational. What is experimental? Experimental aims to train pupils in solving with incidental acquisition of information and motor skill. So ang mga examples po niyan is yung discovery, original procedure, analysis, and solution of the problems. Uh, naalala ko nung nasa grade school ako, uh, nag-experiment kami ng isang item na parang dapat may dalawang solution ka na pag pinagsama mo, lala may kalalabasan siya na isang bagay na magagamit mo. And I think na yun yung best example ng experimental, yung mag-ano ka, mag-combine ka ng ng two items or ng two solutions and makakabuo ka ng isang bagay na pwede mong gamitin or mapapakinabangan mo. So, ang nagawa ko po nun, nung grade school po ako ay uh, yung aceton po, yung pang ano na po ko, yung aceton po and then yung ash or abo na papel. Na sin, yun po yung sinunog na papel. Pag pinagsama mo po yun and kuha ka ng isang empty na pencil pen, yung wala ng sulat, then lagay mo dun, ayun po, nagagamit siya, nakakapagsulat na siya, eh, may ink na, kumbaga. Yun po yung naisip ko na experiment. Hindi ko alam kung kung sikat na yun nun or ano, pero nung trinay ko kasi yun, uh, gumana naman siya, and naging, use, naging usable naman siya. Yan ho. So, the second is the observational. The acquisition of facts is the dominant aim. Facts can be acquired through activities such as visit to museums, exhibit in art galleries, watching demonstrations, listening to the lectures, viewing films, and going on the field trips. And I think na ito yung mga activities outside the classroom na tinatawag din naman nila na laboratory kasi ano eh, nag-visit din ng museum. Uh, for example, yung museum, uh, national museum, yun ho, art galleries, and then watching demonstrations. Parang yung pag nanonood ka ng mga movies, for example, yung kay, ano yun, yung, yun sa mga bata po. Basta yun, yun ho. So, next, steps in laboratory method. Introductory step includes the termination of the work to be done. The teacher should motivate the work at the stage. Work period. No matter what they 
are working on, the student will gain experience in scientific procedure, handling raw material, and using tools. Culminating activities. Decide on how to present results of their individual work in the following forms. Explaining the nature and importance of the problem the group had worked on. Reporting data gathered or other findings. Presenting illustrative material or special contributions. Special reporting and exhibition of work by those with individual projects. Exhibiting projects and explanation by their sponsors. Few things to remember inside the laboratory. Laboratory exercises should be adopted to prove their social needs. Materials must be socially valuable and relevant. Problems should be real, interesting, and adapted to the learner's level. Laboratory exercise must grow out of problems. Laboratory manual should be chosen with care. The teacher must be skillful director of problem solving and of the study. Next. Next is the advantages in, by using the laboratory method. It is learning by doing. Impressions through several sense make learning more effective. Undergoing actual experience is more vivid. It is a direct preparation for life. The disadvantages. An economical way of learning becomes mechanical at times. The expensive material sometimes does not justify results. Loss of time occurs due to indiscriminate overuse of the method. So, I have here a sample lesson plan in Science 5. And these are the steps, the preparation and introductory step. Number one is the objectives. Two is the subject matter. Three, of course, the materials. Four is the procedure. And may kita nyo po, may, may question yung teacher, yung konyare environment in our, everything in our environment is changing. Do you agree class? And the student answer yes. Yan po yung example. And then, yun nga, after nung mga questions, the presentation. And to na yung preparation na activity 1 and activity 2 and of course nakasama dyan yung materials and the procedure okay and next is the actual work period Yan na. and the discussion of the results the conclusion next is the application evaluation and last is the assignment So, love safety tips. 1. Think safety first. 2. Know emergency responses. 3. Know what you're working with. 4. Use the smallest possible amounts. 5. Follow all safety procedures. 6. Report dangerous activity or situations. 7. Store and handle hazardous material safety. 8. If you don't know, always ask. Thank you for listening po. Hello, good day everyone. I am Maylene Gumapos and I'm gonna discuss about the Socratic method of teaching. But first, let us know the origin of this method and kilalanin natin kung sino si Socrates. So, who was Socrates? Socrates is an enigmatic classical Greek philosopher noong mga panahon 469 BC to 399 BC. He is the founder of modern Western philosophy and a champion of oral modes of communication. He was admired by his follower for his integrity, self-mastery, his profound philosophical insight, and his great argumentative skill. And dahil po doon, his logic gave birth to the scientific method of the he is the first Greek philosopher to seriously explore question of ethics and 
ilan na nga po sa mga naging estudyante niya ay sina Plato, Aristotle, and Xenophon wherein yung literary figure or yung reliable information about kay Socrates ay nanggaling sa mga writings ni Plato. Siya yung nagpakilala kay Socrates rather than the traditional history. Socrates was accused and convicted as well of corrupting the youth, but his only real crime was embarrassing and irritating people. He was widely hated in Athens because for them, Socrates made them appear ignorant and foolish. But that was not his intention. It is his way of teaching. He wants his students to dig deeper, to look for more information. Because what they just know is not entirely as it is. If they can articulate their side, then that is great. And because of that, because of the social and moral critic, yung attempt niya to improve the Athenian sense of justice led to his death. And by the way, hindi po nakilala si Socrates because of writing books. No, hindi po siya nagsulat ng mga libro. Nakilala siya because he liked to ask proving and sometimes humiliating question, which gave rise to the famous Socratic method of teaching. So, what is the Socratic method? So, Socratic inquiry is emphatically not teaching in the conventional sense of the word. Yung mga leader ng Socratic inquiry is not the purveyor of knowledge. Rather, they are filling the empty minds of largely passive students with facts and truths acquired through years of study. Socratic teacher is not the sage on the stage, but they are rather the guide on the side. Bakit? Because in the Socratic method, there are no lectures and no need of rote memorization. Kaya tinawag sila na the guide on the side. The classroom experiences a shared dialogue between teacher and students in which both are responsible for pushing the dialogue forward through questioning. Wherein yung teacher or the leader ng dialogue will ask proving questions in an effort to expose the values and belief which frame and support the thoughts and statements of the participants in the inquiry and then the students will ask questions as well in return both of the teacher and each other yung inquiry dito nagpa-progress interactively and yung teacher ginaguide niya yung mga participants throughout the discussion Furthermore, the inquiry is open-ended and those who practice the Socratic method do not use PowerPoint slides. Wala mga lesson plan. The group follows the dialogue where it goes. Now, let's discuss about the essential components of the Socratic method. First, the Socratic method uses question to examine the values, principles, and belief of the students. Through questioning, the participants strive first to identify and then to defend their moral intuition about the world which undergird their ways of life. Socratic inquiry hindi siya nagdetail with producing a recitation of facts, but it further demands the participants' thoughts, actions, and belief. It aims to reveal the motivation and assumption upon which students lead their lives. Thus, the practitioners of the Socratic method may want students to know facts, but they want to focus more on what the students thinks about these facts, not what others are thinking. So, second, the Socratic method focuses on moral education, on how one ought to live. That is, rather than making arguments or asking questions designed to convince any or all people, all comments in a Socratic inquiry are directed at specific participants in the discussion. This is not what is thought or said about the world in general, but what each participant think or says about the world. Kumbaga, it is under your own perspective, your own point of view. The goal is not to consider the personalized proposition and abstraction, but to prove the underlying values and belief of each inquirer. Sabi ko nga po kanina, since ang substance ng Socratic method is the belief and value system of the participants or the individuals, 
when those beliefs or values are challenged or refuted, it is nothing less than the coherence of the lives of the people that is at stake. As Socrates says often in Plato's dialogue, he is primarily concerned with how one ought to live. What kind of life should one live? Third, the Socratic method demands a classroom environment characterized by productive discomfort. In the best of Socratic dialogues, there is real tension among the interlocutors between the Socratic teacher and the student. The stakes are high. Will the one be called on be called to account? The Socratic professor aims for productive discomfort, not panic and intimidation. Ang aim nito ay hindi para magbigay ng takot sa mga estudyante so that they come prepared to class. No, but to strike fear in the hearts of students that they either cannot articulate clearly the values that guide their lives or that their values and belief do not withstand scrutiny. And last components we have is the Socratic method is better used to demonstrate complexity, difficulty, and uncertainty than at eliciting facts around the world. Bertrand Russell once wrote, and sabi po doon e ganto, as usual in philosophy, the first difficulty is to see that the problem is difficult. If you say to a person untrained in philosophy, how do you know I have two eyes? And then he or she will answer or reply, what a silly question, I can see you have it. No, it is not to be supposed like that. When our inquiry is finished, we shall have arrived at anything radically different from this unphilosophical position. What will have happened will be that we shall have come to see a complicated structure where we thought everything was simple, that we shall have become aware of the penumbra of uncertainty surrounding the situation, which inspires no doubt, that we shall found or find doubt more frequently justified than we suppose. So, ayan po yung mga components or essential components ng Socratic method. Okay, in this Socratic method, the Socratic professor is not the opponent in an argument, nor he or she is someone who always plays devil's advocate. Neither does the Socratic professor possess all the knowledge or the answer, nor he or she is just testing the students. Hindi po, kasi sila din mismo ay participant ng dialogue and open din sila to learn something from the opponent. It follows from this that the Socratic professor does not seek deference to his or her authority, nor does he or she create a cult of personality by seeming aloof, cold, and distant. And also, a Socratic professor, they aim for productive discomfort, not panic and intimidation, katulad nga po ng sinabi ko kanina. So here are the tips for using the Socratic method. First, let's set down conversational guidelines. We must learn student names and have the students learn each other's name. We must also explain that participation requires listening and active engagement and that it is not enough to just insert a single comment in class and then be silent for the rest of the day. And let's emphasize that students should focus their comments on concepts or principles, not first-person narratives. Second, let's ask questions and be comfortable with silence because silence is productive. Be willing to wait for students to respond because silence creates a kind of helpful tension. We can use the 10-second wait rule before we attempt to rephrase our question. Third, let's uh, find ways to produce productive discomfort and above all else use follow-up question get students to account for themselves not just to regurgitate readings and lectures always be open to learn something new don't be a sage on the stage or a guide on the side be willing to say I don't know the answer to that question and allow students to disagree with the instructor 
And let us welcome the crazy idea that offers a new perspective on the topic, but discourage those ideas which are not serious. Brevity and short intervention from the professor are most welcome. No speeches or long lectures. Discourage of secu's difference to authority and status. Break this down, if at all possible. And then find a classroom space that encourage interaction. Finally, don't be scared of size. All of this is possible even in large classes. The Socratic method is possible in a class as large as uh, 70. So, we can draw as many students as possible into the discussion. So, ayan po yung mga tips for using the Socratic method. It is a dynamic format for helping our students to take genuine intellectual skills in the classroom and to learn about critical thinking and problem solving. And also to engage students by arousing their curiosity and make learning a participatory, not passive experience. Here is an example of a Socratic method of teaching. Socrates once asked his student and said, Is lying a bad thing? Then the student answered, Certainly, the gods tell us that lying is a terrible sin. So, lying is always a terrible sin? And then the student answered again and said, Absolutely, it is. Well then, let us suppose that a father's son is terribly sick, but he refuses to take his medicine. Then the father puts the medicine in his son's drink and tells his son that there is only water in his drink. Is the father's lie a terrible sin now? So, ngayon mapapaisip po tayo. Ayo o nga teka, hindi naman pala lahat masama. Yung iba naman sa atin sasabihin, mali pa din yun. So, nasa sa atin kung paano natin i-articulate yung thoughts natin. Walang tama at walang maling sagot. It is a matter of where you stand and kung paano natin ipaglalaban yung values and belief natin. So, that's all po for the Socratic method of teaching and thank you for listening.